one step past. Way past strange. Robert Ripley of Ripley's Believe It or Not dies after 13th TV show. I like Robert Ripley a lot. He's been a big influence on me. Ripley's Believe It or Not began life in 1918 as a cartoon panel in newspapers. It was originally a sports feature called Champs and Chumps, but he started adding unrelated fun facts to it that quickly overshadowed the sports focus, and, by the next year, he gave the panel its better known name. After that, it became a media phenomenon. Very few things ever get as big as Ripley's Believe It or Not. After his success in newspapers, Ripley conquered books, then radio, then theatrical shorts, all by 1930. TV was an extremely young medium when Ripley decided to host a live TV series in 1949. A lot of people at the time wondered why Ripley even bothered with TV. After all, he had already achieved so much success. How long was TV going to be around anyway? The show debuted on March 1, 1949 on the NBC network and was a hit. Ripley was one of the very first people to prove that TV was a worthwhile medium, believe it or not. However, the show didn't last long. Robert Ripley was filming his 13th episode on May 24, 1949 when, all of a sudden, he passed out and fell to the floor. It was toward the end of the program and, of all things, it was during a segment on Taps, the military funeral song. The show wasn't over, but he couldn't continue. At the time, Ripley resisted all efforts to take him to the hospital. Twelve hours after his fainting spell, Ripley checked himself into the hospital. He died just three days later on May 27th. The cause of death was a massive heart attack. He was 59 years old. The spookiness of his sudden death is still quite eerie. The unlucky number 13. The fact that he dropped during taps. Also, if Robert Ripley had any pre-existing health conditions, he had kept them low profile. Quite frankly, no one expected him to die when he did. The master of weird stuff for over 30 years died in a weird manner himself. What happened to the show? Ripley's TV series tried to continue without him. For the rest of the first season, a number of guest custodians hosted the show until Robert St. John became the permanent host in July of 1949. His run ended in November of that year. For the second season, which began in January of 1950, the show was retooled as a dramatic anthology series and featured guest players every week. By October of 1950, the show was over. Truth be told, it never became a bad show. But the lack of Robert Ripley, who was such a great showman in the heart of Believe It or Not, was a huge hit to the franchise. It survived in the comics and other print media, but it would be many years before Ripley's Believe It or Not would once again become a TV sensation. A pilot episode for a new series was made in 1956, but was not picked up. It wouldn't be until 1982 that a new TV series on the ABC network, hosted by Jack Palance, would prove to be a big success and lasted through 1986. As it stands, this is still the most famous live-action version of Believe It or Not. A short-lived cartoon series came out in 1999. Another popular TV series, hosted by Dean Cain, aired from 2000 to 2003 on TBS. The Philippines had a version of the show that ran from 2008 to 2010. In 2019, Bruce Campbell hosted yet another version of the show on the Travel Channel. Living the Life of Ripley Robert Ripley was born Leroy Robert Ripley in 1890. He was from Santa Rosa, California. Robert dropped out of high school after the death of his father to support the family. At just age 16, he started working as a sports cartoonist for various newspapers. Robert was entirely a self-taught artist. Also around this time, he took up playing baseball and became semi-pro. For a long time, it looked like this is what Ripley wanted to make his career. He managed to juggle baseball and his busy career as a cartoonist for quite a while. 
In 1908, Ripley sold his first cartoon to Life magazine. Although not quite the caliber of Ripley's Believe It or Not, this was really his first taste of the big time. In the winter of 1912, he moved from California to New York City. He was employed as a cartoonist by the New York Globe, but really wanted to try out for the New York Giants baseball team. Unfortunately, an arm injury ended all hopes of Ripley ever having a baseball career. It was now 1914, and the man who would later become the most famous world traveler took his first trip to Europe. There was something about going to new places that Ripley found exciting, although it would take some time for this to factor into his life. On December 19, 1918, his first cartoon of Champs and Chumps was published in the New York Globe. It was intended to be a sports feature because, after all, he was a sports guy. However, he liked plunking in little odds and ends facts that were unrelated to sports. Was it Ripley's trip to Europe that inspired him to share these factoids? Maybe the fact that his baseball hopes had been dashed also led him to downplaying the sports angle. At any rate, everybody loved the non-sports material best. On October 16, 1919, the cartoon was renamed to Ripley's Believe It or Not and it blew up all over the place. Also in that year, he married a Ziegfeld Follies dancer by the name of Beatrice Roberts. Roberts' marriage to Beatrice didn't last. In reality, they were only together for three months. However, it took until 1926 for the divorce to officially go through. Ripley himself never married again. He did, however, have a lot of girlfriends around the world. Ripley wasn't opposed to the idea of marriage, but his wife would have to share his globetrotting lifestyle, and that wasn't an easy find. If Robert Ripley had children, we don't know about them. Beatrice had two more failed marriages after that, producing one son. She also had a decent career as a movie actress, although mostly in small parts. One of her best-known roles is Queen Azura in Flash Gordon's Trip to Mars from 1938. In 1920, Ripley went back to Europe, although this time was to cover the Olympics in Belgium. On December 3, 1922, he made his first trip around the world. He kept a journal of his travels, and this would prove to be quite helpful for the cartoon. In 1923, Ripley hired a researcher by the name of Norbert Perlroth. This man became the primary researcher of the cartoon until 1975. Also in the early 1920s, Ripley became a champion handball player and later wrote a book about the sport. Odd enough, as popular as Ripley's cartoon was, it remained in only the New York Globe until 1923 when that paper folded. Then it moved to the New York Post. Reprints of the cartoon were published in various places, opening it up to a wider audience. On July 9, 1929, Ripley joined King Feature Syndicate, the major distributor of comic strips in the world. King Features is what got Ripley's Believe It or Not in newspapers all over America and the world. What was already a big hit became a super duper mega hit. By 1930, Ripley's crossed over into radio, theatrical shorts, and more books. Also in that year, Hearst who owned King Features, started funding Ripley's travels around the world. In 1933, Ripley opened his first museum in Chicago, Illinois. He called it the Auditorium. Although as many museums still retain the Auditorium name, they are better known today as simply the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museums. While most people in the world struggled financially during the Great Depression of the 1930s, Robert Ripley prospered. The things he talked about and shared with people cheered them up, and there was a lot of money in selling happiness. By the end of the decade, he was netting $500,000 a year, extremely good money for that time period. In the 1940s, during the height of World War II, Ripley had to stop foreign traveling. It simply wasn't safe. 
he decided to do a lot of charity work for the war effort instead. In 1948, Ripley ended his radio show in favor of the new television medium. Many people were skeptical, because many people still didn't have TV sets. Ripley believed in the potential of television. It's sad that he didn't live long enough to see just how huge television would become. The Curious Mr. Ripley Robert Ripley is a paradox. Outside of the buck teeth, he was a normal looking guy. For what he was into, Robert didn't look like a freak. He was interested in the strangest stuff, but didn't really act strange. Ripley was thought to be an eccentric, but he was never mad scientist eccentric. He was about as normal as anyone could be who had great wealth, fame, and traveled the world. Ripley was an outgoing person and knew lots of people. He went to a lot of parties and nightclubs. However, for much of his life he had incredible stage fright. Despite this, he became known as a master showman. When Robert was alive, he and Ripley's Believe It or Not were synonymous. He was a great showman like P.T. Barnum, but friendlier and made a living off of facts instead of lies. If you knew about Ripley's Believe It or Not, you knew who Robert Ripley was and what he looked like. In the years since Robert Ripley's death, many people forgot about the man himself, or probably didn't know there was ever a real Ripley to begin with. The man's life, death, and continued legacy is fantastic to say the least, and way past strange. <laughs>